The new Greenville update is here two weeks after the last one, another car only update. Basically. Going into the dealership, there's definitely not quite as many cars as the last update since that one took significantly more time, thus, you know, had more cars. But this update has a pretty solid 13 vehicles. Most exciting of the 13, to I'm sure most of you, the remodeled Dodge Challenger, now a 2023. This is the final model year for the Challenger, at least in its current form, but it's going out with a pretty good bang in the game too. This right here is the Challenger Demon 170, a 1,2500 horsepower limited which is available for the next three days. It goes off sale at midnight CST on the 26th. One of the fastest accelerating cars in the entire game for $350,000. I've seen some people complain about the price, some say it's a bargain, some say it's overpriced. But in my opinion, I think it's a pretty good compromise since they were debating what price it should be at. I've driven this car before, but I have not properly accelerated in it yet. I made a custom startup for this thing because these things are pretty rowdy. Got the massive tires in the rear. Those are huge. I'll line up here on the main road and uh, let's see what it's got. Alright, and go! Oh my goodness! Yeah, this thing's, uh, it's pretty quick. I was actually expecting it to be slower than that top speed wise. 214, oh, and I just crashed straight into a sign. Definitely gonna outrun most everybody. Oh! These cars are also quite a bit bigger as well. I think there's still the old Challengers, the prop car, so maybe I can find one of those somewhere. You know, I don't know if the Challenger is still a prop car or not. I know it was for a while, but I don't remember ever seeing it recently. Oh, the Durango over there. Maybe that's the best thing I can get for a comparison. Because these cars are quite big now. Very well might be longer than the Durango. Very, very similar. I don't know. Maybe the Durango's still a little bit bigger. Turn on instant braking and let's do a 0 to 100 and braking test. Put an auto again. There you go. Definitely zero problems getting up to 100 here. Having more problems getting to 100 exactly. And brake. Yeah, pretty solid braking. Pretty solid drifting as well. Barely even trying there. If you can drift in semi, that's how you know it's a pretty good drift core. Or auto even. I could probably drift in auto. A little bit. Alright, going back to the dealership. Let me go check out the other Challenger, the regular one. Because that is where all the trims are at. So for 2023, they brought back some stuff. They brought back a couple colors here. Sublime, B5 Blue, and Plum Crazy, which are some of my favorite colors on the Challenger. Nice to see those back. And then you've also got a bunch of other cool Mopar colors that come on this car. Destroyer Gray, Go Mango, Octane Red, Tor Red, F8 Green, Frostbite. So for the trims, you get the base model here, the SXT, for $31,995. This thing has a 303 horsepower V6. The V6 also comes on the GT model. Pretty much a nicer looking SXT, though it's the only Challenger you can get in real life with all-wheel drive, but only rear-wheel drive in-game. This thing is for $35,265. Step above that, you have the only trim with the 5.7 Hemi, which has 372 horsepower. The RT for $40,805. Then you step up once again, the RT Scat Pack TA wide body, the RT Scat Pack, the RT Scat Pack wide body, Scat Pack Shaker wide body, and all of those have the 385 horsepower 6.4 liter 392 Hemi. Then you step up once again, you get to all the SRT models. All the regular SRTs have 717 horsepower, and then the red eyes step up to 797 horsepower. Going up even further, you have the Super Stock with 807 horsepower for $90,895. And at the top, right below the 170, despite not existing for the 23 model year in real life, is the regular Demon with 808 horsepower. Just one horsepower more than the Super Stock. All the SRT models use a 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi that shares sounds in game other than the limited one. Now briefly, there was another top dog in Greenville's Challenger lineup, a regular TA Scat Pack. This car broke some records when the update first released. The thing nearly went 250 miles an hour and it's just a regular 6.4. Now it's been fixed though, which is good, but also mildly unfortunate. With its fixed tune, here's a zero to 100 braking test. 
not too much of an issue getting up to 100 here. Let's get the 6-4. And hit the brakes. Not too bad. Got a lot to choose from between all the colors, trims, and even the limited. This car by itself was the biggest surprise of the update pretty much. The devs didn't tease it really anywhere. By far the most used less talked about car in the update and I'd say definitely for good reason. Even made into the game icon. My next move is the M6. The 6 series in general. Oh. I have not seen this at all really. Like I haven't looked at it very much, very closely. I've never driven it. This is one of the last cars basically to be added into the update. Right here we got the 05 6 series. We got one trim, the 4.4 CI. This thing has 325 horsepower. And then the M6 over here. Horsepower is 507. Quite the bump. This thing's got the V10 in it. Take a look around here. 3D headlights. Looks pretty good, actually. I've really actually grown onto the M6 design. It's not too bad. We got flames? I was not expecting flames out of this car, honestly. Can it do a burnout, though? Oh, it can! That's actually way better than I was expecting it to do. Dang. Finally wide open throttle. It's kind of weird how the middle DRLs are smaller than the other ones. <laughs> Gives it such a weird look to it, but it's kind of interesting. The only thing I don't like about the front is that, you know, like the top uh, turn signal part, at least like whatever it is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I wish that was on the bottom. Braked. Put it into auto, zero to 100 and braking test. Oh, and <laughs> I think I just broke the car. Yeah, I put it into automatic and now the car just doesn't accelerate. This is what happens when I press W, it just revs. I lost all the gears. Can you like call the BMW technician to come fix this? Or, don't you work on your car, dude? Can you fix this? Maybe. Uh, do your turn, pull on the truck planet. I'm not sure this is gonna work. Are you sure you can't just like work on it on the side of the road? Go in the ditch. Dang it. I'm just gonna have to put the hazards on. I'm sorry, man. Put it into park. All right, let me get on this car here. Oh, that looked really painful. It looks like your uh, first gear, second gear, pretty much all of the gears uh, as I'm looking are not um, engaged with the flywheel. I just have to fix that. It's because you switched it to auto and it just like broke it, you know. Should be good now. Try it out here. Oh, good. okay, all right. Works good in auto. Shifts. I'm the best at auto swaps. Not my first rodeo. Here we go. And that right there is 100. There we go. Set to 100. And hit the brakes. Now! Ooh. Not it's bad. all right. Definitely did a lot worse than the Challenger. The Challenger stopped like over here. <laughs> Next up is a remodel of the 2019, now 2021 GMC Sierra. It was in GV3 with the same model it's had up until today. That's just crazy. Base regular cab, SLE double cab. This is actually not too bad of a trim. I might get one of those. AT4 yeah. regular cab. This is a custom trim, which it's not sold in the US, but it's sold in other markets, I believe. And they kind of made it a little bit custom. They put a rack in the bed with a light bar on it. Yeah, I wish the, the normal like AT4 had that stuff. Yeah, the crew cab AT4 sick. just is normal. And you've also got the Denali. This is what used to be in the game. The only trim that you used to have. The Denali Ultimate, though, that's also one that you can get. Yeah, that's with the black chrome. Okay, I see now. It's kind of cool, though. I like the blacked out um, headlight housing. Then you get the Elevation, another one of my favorite trims. The SLT, a pretty standard trim you'd see. The base crew cab and the SLT Opted. Seemingly the only crew cab trim with the 6 foot 8 bed and also a bug deflector added onto the hood. The Elevation Double Cab X31 Edition with the black package. Yeah, the difference between these packages is not much. Um, there's no side steps and there's actually a worse radio. I can tell because there's no radio antenna on the roof on this one compared to the elevation normally the slt has the 420 horsepower 62 the sle double cab has the four cylinder so i think i'll skip the sle i think i'll just get the slt opted i kind of figured you were gonna go with that i just realized it also has a bed cover in the back i, I really like that see so the 62 right. and see those drls turn on oh look at the gmc logo where at in the front oh lights up some stuff right there we should light it up in the back but i honestly like how the front's just like that i didn't expect to like it very much considering this isn't quite my favorite generation but it's pretty nice yeah. Ooh! three two one go oh the front end didn't actually snap up as much as i thought it would yeah man those wheel wells still throw me off it's so weird <laughs> <laughs> all right there we go 100 miles an hour and hit the brakes with all these trucks um there's new AAV sounds i believe they sound proper like the actual gmc warning sound i really like it 
Oh. <laughs> Uh, let's try that again. I'm gonna put my cruise on. Why did my adaptive cruise slow me down? Also, no AB. Not yet. Oh, there we go. That flexed quite crazy. Do you see that? That's not All bad. On the wheel well. Keep going. No, you keep going. It can still go. Trust me. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Look at that. That is <laughs> quite the flex. Let's move on to another off roader, the Forerunner. I've kind of been liking Forerunners quite a bit recently. This is the 2023, which looks like the same as the 2014 Toyota Forerunner. Got eight trims here the SR5 at $40,000, the Limited at $49, the TRD Pro for $54, the top of the line, the SR5 Premium for $43, the TRD Off Road for $46, the normal TRD Off Road for $44 the TRD Sport, and the 40th Anniversary Special Edition with the stripes on the side, which you can't really tell here, but if I put it in black, there you go. These things all share the same engine, 270 horsepower V6 with a five-speed automatic in 2023 at 17.5 miles per gallon, and it weighs 4,600 pounds. I'm gonna go ahead and get the TRD Pro, of course. Get a couple cool colors on here, like Voodoo Blue, Calvary Blue, Inferno Orange, Solar Octane, Lime Rush, Lunar Rock, all those cool TRD colors that you get throughout the years. Solar Octane is the one you can get this year, and I believe you can get Lime Rush on some of the other trims, but TRD Pro for this year, it's Solar Octane. I'll get it in Lime Rush, honestly. $54,260, see how it is. It's kind of quick, honestly, relatively for a forerunner. The lighting on this thing is pretty nice as well. I like the tail lights quite a bit. Hit the brakes here. Oh, <laughs> kind of missed my spot there. Taking quite a bit longer than the uh, other vehicles. Hit 100. Oh! Ah! Might as well do an AEB test. Does the reverse AEB actually work? Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh pretty decent. Oh. Won't even let me run you over. Oh, never mind. Oh. <laughs> All right, try this again. The transmission on this thing, for being like an old five-speed, it's pretty smooth. Oh. Moving on here, next vehicle. Let's do the Scion. I think it's a good thing that it was in this update opposed to any of the other ones, because if it was in any other one, it would be very overlooked. Considering that if this was any other update, I probably would have not acknowledged this car's existence. Yeah, which year are we buying? Do you want to get a different one? It's the one I can actually afford, so. <laughs> All right, you get the 07, I'll get the 08. The 07 here, got the standard and the spec package, and you have the same trims on the 08. The spec package is probably just like maxed out um, on the options, maybe. Pretty pricey for an old Scion, coming in at $7,750. Yours was only $50 less. <laughs> so we got the two here, the 07 on the left, the 08 on the right, which has slightly different headlights from what I can see here. And I really can't tell much else of a difference. Is the grill different a little bit? Oh yeah, this grill is like hexagon or like double hex. What the heck? What the, what the hex? <laughs> uh, different <laughs> taillights. This one has taillights that look like a Nissan Altima. This car has such weird lights because it's all circles. This is a circle, this is a circle, this is a circle. If you go to the headlights, that's a circle. That's also a circle and this is a circle. The I mean, they're hexagons, so. Uh, it's pretty much circle. Lights in front of here kind of remind me of the 6 Series. Yeah, I'm it kind of does. This one kind of has a Maxima look to it from the back. It looks like an Altima Coupe to me, I guess. Or like a Civic even. Oh, I guess. <laughs> Sorry. Oh wow. It rev gears up. Wow. Send it out of here. These kinda... are kind of zippy. Dude, I was about to use the same word. <laughs> They're actually kind of fast. I don't mind this. Oh, thing. they don't turn very well though. Well, I don't know what you expect. It came straight out of driving a new forerunner and it turned better than that. True. No, but honestly, I don't mind these. Like honestly, just slightly trolling in GVRP wouldn't be bad in this thing. <laughs> slightly trolling. These cars are exactly the same spec, so it's really driver skill slash server lag that's gonna put us in a I'm gonna go on manual. We'll see if it does anything. Why am I smoking you? And that's 100 finally. What? Pulling Breaking away test. slightly there for a second. Oh, these brakes are terrible! Wow! Oh, you have instant brakes? Yeah. There's another section of the video showing the difference between instant and smart braking. These brakes are actually very impressive, almost Challenger-like. We got two vehicles left, technically five if you count the dealership listings, three of which are these. The Remodeled Emergency Services 2023 Tahoes. Last update, we got these things remodeled in their civilian form along with the Suburbans, courtesy of WoW. And these, of course, followed suit. Got the FD, Sheriff, and WSP variants. 
The FD variant has one trim, the Sheriff variant has three trims, the Greenville, Undercover, and Sheriff, and the WSP also has three trims, the WSP Slick Top, Normal WSP, and the WSP Unmarked. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get the FD variant. Just the same as a normal 5.3, nothing too crazy. Why are the DRLs not working? DRLs, no! Turn the lights on here. Maybe that'll make it for the DRLs. It's actually kind of a cool pattern, I like that. I really like the pattern on the FD stuff. Sirens? I actually haven't heard these in GB yet. I just noticed the American flag on the corner with the bald ego faded into American flag, but it's so blurry. Uh, it's funny. It's so good. Right alley light, left alley light, and then the spotlight. Nice. Oh, that's not track control. Alright. <laughs> I wonder if GB's ever gonna add uh, movable spotlights. That would be very cool, like specifically movable to wherever you want. Yeah, like with your cursor. Yeah. What am I seeing on the side though? What's that light? Oh, that's the right alley light. Oh man, uh, it's actually not that bad at breaking. It wasn't significantly worse than the M6. Oh! I need to spot you a little bit here. I don't know if you can keep going. You might flip. Hey, do you think the FD is going to be okay if I crash their brand new Tahoe? Uh, I mean, you're only a volunteer, so I don't know. You could try. Oh! oh! And the final vehicle in the update is the 2015 Mercedes ML. Get the normal one with a couple trims here, the 250 D-Tech, the 400, and the 350. Then you have the AMG, which has so many pops, I'm sure, for $41,995. It's actually pretty cheap. I didn't expect it to be that cheap. And the 63 Premium with the black roof for $43,755. I'm just going to get a completely blacked out 63 Premium. Let's see how it sounds with that massive muffler. It's not even oh, that bad. That's like the GB3 startup, I think. <laughs> Why is that the start? That's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it has so many pops. It <laughs> actually has a lot of pops. That is a lot of pops right there. All right. It's a proper AMG. Oh, man, this thing sends. Why did it actually send? Get over the... Oh. Oh. Pop on every ship. That's so funny. Oh! Little fun fact, this pop sound wasn't in GV until about GV3 when they added the Lancer Evo. Yeah, I remember that thing. Oh! It moves for sure. That right there is 100 miles an hour. And it hit the brakes! Better than the M6, I think. Oh, dang! Alright, I wasn't expecting an all-wheel drive SUV to break loose, but... Yes, it does. And that concludes the reviews of these 7 slash 13 vehicles in the update. This is a car update, but there were some other changes as well, mainly to the interactive job earnings. Most interactive jobs have received a boost in the money you earn, a very significant boost at that too. The criminal job payouts from each individual robbing were tripled, and you can now cash out $2,500 each time opposed to the prior $1,500. Taxi driving pays five times more per mile. DOT tow transports were raised from $110 to $750. Each car you sold in the dealership job used to give you $250, but now it gives you $950. $50. Pizza delivery was raised from $60 to $250. Police arrest went from $50 to $250. Putting out flames in the fire and rescue team went from $15 to $45. And finally, all fast food worker jobs went from $40 to $80 to $100 to $170 per customer you serve. All these raises are definitely going to make working interactive jobs much more worthwhile. And the last thing, for those struggling with garage space, despite the massive 45 vehicle limit we already had, you can now have 50 vehicles. That's the end of the update. Thanks for watching.